welcome. Today's video is for both the experienced and new Power BI developer. Why? Because Microsoft just released nine updates for KPI cards, specifically on the reference labels. Check this out. We're going to go through a tutorial today for how to build these KPI cards. You will have a full understanding of how to do that, but we're going to incorporate the process of the nine updates that release. These are detailed formatting things that are going to allow you to take your dashboard to the next level. You can see here, the, I'll zoom in on one card, boom, right here. And now you can see just the granularity of things, but there's going to be a list of nine updates. After this video, you will have a full understanding for how to use the new card KPI visual, including reference labels. It's going to be one of the most detailed tutorials specifically on this visual. We're going to build this thing from start to finish. Let's get into Power BI Desktop. Let's go. All right, so here we are. There's going to be a couple of steps you're going to need to do. First, go into GitHub, open up this file. The link's in the description of this YouTube video. We're going to have this main page and then a lab tab. The lab tabs, we're going to go through these nine updates and build these KPI cards. But what you need to understand is that this will be the most detailed tutorial on KPI cards, the new card specifically. What this page shows is first a filter, which in one of my most recent videos is actually mimicking a KPI card and it's allowing you to filter. Uh, so check that out in the top if you're interested to see how to build these. And what we're going to focus on though is how to build just outstanding KPI cards, including the nine new releases that just happened. But the best way to do that is I don't want to just plow through the updates. I want to actually show you how to build these step by step. In the bookmarks of this video, you can jump to the different updates if you want, but it's very important if you want to understand how to build cards that just look awesome to follow along. So what you'll see is there's so many subtleties with the shadows, the glows, the, the accents, the gradients, the images, the fonts, the spacing, the, the subtle formatting. I put a lot of different things in here so we can go through them. Some things bold, some things change. We can look at colors changing. The whole idea of we have net sales, the total sold and return. But you're gonna see all the customization that happens with this going to take your cards to the next level. So on the right hand side, there's the data model. There's gonna be a lot of calculations. KPR cards are calculations, they're all in here. So you'll be able to follow along and look at that. But really, we're also gonna go through these nine updates. There's a blog that just came out showing nine different updates specifically. Uh, we'll talk through each of these, but card customization, the accent bar, what's happened with that, how it's more updated, uh, how you can move things to the right, the positional, the background color, total fill, tabular style, a different way to organize these reference labels. The formatting is now inherited. Before we had to use format functions, but now it's pulling through divider transparency and how to use it to set up cool things like this card shape with rounded corners. They made it so you can be pixelated versus percentages and then overflow support, but also the whole journey for how to make these. So buckle up. We're diving in right now. First, let's start. Let's just start building. So open this file up and follow along. When you want to build a card, we're going to go to the new KPI card and you'll see how much formatting makes a difference by what the transformation process looks like for this. So at first, anytime you're building a KPI card, you're going to start with the measure. That's the key call out value measure. So we have net sales sold and returned. So let's add those. We're going to go on the right hand side. I'll turn on this animation, but we're going to have uh, sales. We're going to go net sales. Then we're going to go to sold. Then we're going to go to returned. So it's pretty common to say, here's your net profit. Here's the total top line you sold. Here's what's returned. And by default, you'll see that, well, this is kind of the first state of the card. So we're going to go from this to this. That's a big, big improvement. Now let's go through the steps for how to do that. All right. So what we'll do first is we'll just get all the necessary data and kind of frame these things up. So we'll do that process. We'll see the card customizations. So first what we're going to do is 
shape these suckers up and you'll see that in this way under the layout section uh, you can start by doing a uh, single row a grid a single column so a column will go vertically single row left to right and a grid but we'll jump to this overflow support initially actually we'll save that for the end so we're just going to start with a single row and now let's set up the shape of these things so we we're going to want the layout we'll go to the cards themselves the shape uh, is going to be a rounded rectangle and previously this is one of the updates you had to do a percentage but now you can actually put the pixelated points to round out these cards it's a good subtle detail so we'll cross that one off the list i'll go right here and we'll talk about the rounded corners so now it's pixelated you can get it right away let's keep going and so i always for these kpi cards we turn on the shadows turn on the glow it's just going to help square them up make them pop a little bit more but you'll see the differences of like these are actually slightly glowing red slightly glowing green these are a little bit bigger so we'll go through all that kind of stuff especially the reference label section it's very important for how to add those things but we're just going to start one thing at a time so now let's go in and we'll, we'll keep changing the size of these things as we go let's focus on the callout value so the callout value for this one right here din 23 we're going to put the font to 23 but one thing you're going to notice is that the uh we don't want to have this abbreviated or kind of rounded we want the full number so the way to do that for every series is you go into the measure and then you display units none so to repeat that process you're going to under call out values net sales and we're going to do sold that's the next one display units none returned display units none all right we're already starting to square this thing up let's call it let's rename it so the label is what's shown here and by default it's going to show what's right here so you can just call this whatever you want in this case we're going to do capital so it kind of stands out net sales sold returned all right so we're shaping them up step by step by step now let's add in the reference information and then we'll start to tweak the formatting so we're going to dive into this part that talks about the right of call out and the options so look at this this is a cool thing what we're going to do is click go to the cards or reference labels series all so you'll notice we can't drop anything we can't do anything right now well why is that because you must select the specific spot you want to add the data to the net sales card the sold card returned because they're all different so for this case we're going to have three in each and you'll see this has a detailed and we'll get to those as well so for net sales we're going to go to add we want to see the goal our goal of net sales and then the variance and then the average net sales all right so this is what it looks like by default and again that's why this this update's great i used to put everything on the left hand side well you have a lot of space that's unused so they updated this to give the ability to move things to the right but you'll notice how good these things look so let's figure out how to make this look like what's above so let's first just add all the values so we're going to go to sold we're going to do the same thing for this we want to tell the story of uh, total units and then the sold number of units so we can do that by units sold and then also the average total and that's where uh, up here at the top average sold so this tells that whole story of how many units we sold uh, total and then we're going to get the percentages so where do we find that okay this next step and what this 73 percent shows is that 25,000 is 73 percent of 34,000 that's the percentage of units total that were sold uh, so to add a detail level under the reference labels you'll pick 
the specific, this is, we're going to get to the very details of these things, but you're going to pick the specific, uh, reference label that you want to add the detail to. So we're on the sold. We're going to pick the reference label of unit sold. We're going to go to the detail, turn it on. And within this, we have a measure that's going to be the variance for unit sold or the percentage. And let me find where that is. So it's going to be units total sold percentage right here. So under the detail, units total sold percentage, 73. Okay, let's add the values over here for the return. And that's where as we go through this process, you can always uh, be repetitive to just remember how to do these things that will lock it in. But we're going to move it to the right here in a second. And that's the big update for this for this release. So total return. Let's add these same columns. So we're going to go to uh, units total collapse this. All right. So we want to have under returned. Now we're going to move up to select the label and we're going to pick select a series return series. We want to have the total units and now we want to have the returned number units returned. And then within units returned, we're going to add the detail of returned percentage. So let's find it here. My picture is making it harder to find. So we can, always, if you're ever looking for a field, the easiest way to do that is to come up to the actual value, go to the value, units total return. Oops. Units total return percentage. Great. So now we're going to come pick this, go to the detail for returned for the label of units return. Turn this detail on and have units return total 27%. Finally, we're going to add the average return. So we're going to go to the average return number. We're going to add that as, okay. <clears throat> so now we've built this up, but again, there's a lot to go to, to make these turn into something cool like this. So the first update again, or the second update was how to move things to the right. So what we'll see is under the reference label section, now that we've added stuff to it, if we select all, we can choose these options and this option is new. Where do we want to position it right now? It's below the call out. We want to move it to the right. This is going to allow us to use that space way more effectively. We'll adjust the height of these things and make everything squared up here too. So if we look at just this one, the height is 167. Put the height of this 167, keep things apples to apples. All right, we are cruising. I'm going to take this and just put it back over here as well in case we want to do some filtering later on. But let's keep diving into this. So you can see, you can see here we're starting to get things that take shape. This is good. All right. Let's make the spacing here uh, the same. So what you'll see is that we just want to maximize the space that we can use by shrinking this gap here. So that's going to be found under the layout, the space between cards. Just take that all the way to zero. We're going to take that all the way down and there'll be a few more things that we'll edit here as well, but we'll, we'll just keep going through that process. All right. So let's look at now another update for the accent bar. So previously the accent bar, if you added one in the accent bar, are these accent bar on the top accent bar, accent bar, you can put it on the left-hand side as well. But the accent bar is a good way to just show more like eye grabbing attention for KPI. Again, you have something standard like this, or you add these sorts of things to make it pop out. So previously the accent bar only went over the top or the side of the main call out value section. Now it goes over the whole entire thing. So what that means is it looks sharper. So let's go to these cards 
and we're going to do this. We're going to add the accent bar, turn it on, but we're going to put it, oops, let's turn that back off. We'll apply settings all, accent bar on, position top, width, maybe like 10, 15. So we got that going on here and Serious net sales. We gotta do this 15 as well. Okay. So we have this, but we'll we'll figure out we'll dial in the colors in a minute once we start to set these things up. So let's start now with that process of just getting the background set up where this is green, this is black, this is red, this is a little bit lighter. And to do that, we'll go through this process right here. So we're gonna pick the card. And now we're dealing with the card itself. So we'll come to the card. So accent bar full coverage. We'll take that off. This next part now will be aligned to the background color. So previously the fill, if you see here, it goes all the way around. It looks very nice. Well, previously it would kind of have a white box around it, squaring it off a little bit, but now it's filling it really well. So uh, the way that we're going to use these fills is like so. Let's go to the cards that we want. I'm gonna pick, start with net sales, the background, pick the color I want, green. Okay, good. Now let's just keep on going through these just to flip them, go to sold. Sold, I want that black. Returned, I want that red. Again, follow along in the file. You go through the following along process, you're going to learn more. because there's gonna be a lot of subtleness, like the way we're gonna move this to the right. We're gonna, we're gonna change a lot of these details. And if you learn these details, you'll just have a complete mastering of how to use these new cards. So let's keep moving forward. Now let's look at the, the colors of the uh, reference label section. This is the fill, this is part of the update. So we'll go to reference labels, select the series, net sales. And now we're in this part so we can choose uh, how we want to, to fill the sucker up. So let's first start with, if you just click this for example, you can see what we're dealing with, the title and everything. But let's start with this. We're gonna go Let's get the colors going. It just helps things stand out. So we'll, we'll go, we'll finish one box at a time and then we'll move to the right one. So apply settings. So the call out values, we're going to set this to white for all of them. As you can see, they're all white. Good. That's looking better. Now let's update the label. You can see those are all white as well. So you have the call out value, which is this section. And now we'll do the call out label which is gonna be above it. We'll make that white. We can see these are a little bit bigger. So it's 17 DIN. I also like to set the font to everything to be the same DIN or, or whatever, because there's mixing up fonts. I just don't like how that looks. All right, so let's keep moving forward. So we're getting these things squared away. Let's just go ahead while we're working on this section and add the image. So I'll put three images in GitHub as well, so you can download them and use them. Uh, but really you can pick whichever image you want. And what I like about this is it's just easy to insert them. So when you go to the image section, to the series, you're gonna do the same process. We're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go net sales. We want an image. We're gonna browse to it. It's gonna be this cool net sales pick. Oop, we're gonna want to get the white one with the money bag. And I'll, we'll move them around here in a second too. Then let's go to sold. I'm gonna put an image in there, just browse to it. And that's gonna be a stacked up deal, showing a pile of money and then returned. It's coming back to us, so we're gonna to go to returned. Go to image, browse, pick returned. Okay, so you'll see by default when you add these images in, they're big and all over the place. We don't want that. So we're gonna move them. We're gonna take this image for net sales, move it to the left, and we're going to have the size. Uh, we're gonna dial this in, I think around 30, 35. So it used to be percentages as well, so everything's pixelated now, which is great. 
space between an image. Oh, fit size, turn that off. Yeah, when you turn off the image, you can put the percentage and just have it fill and look real sharp. So we're gonna go to the same thing. We're gonna go to sold. We're gonna put space between image zero, fit size 35. Uh, left of text and let's just see what we're doing here yep and now returned we're gonna go returned left of text space fit size cool and you'll see that these will still these will subtly keep changing as we move and resize these images as well so that's an important thing to understand because it's a percentage. So we're going to keep changing the percentage of these things too. So if we come up here, we, we have this kind of starting to take shape now, but there's still more work to be done. Uh, we're going to now look at the divider. So this is the divider transparency. If we, uh, if we look, there's a divider here, and this kind of plays a cool, a cool part of what's happening. And you're able to set the transparency settings of it so it can kind of feel like this blended ability, same thing that we'll do with the accent bar as we look at that here now. So divider transparency, let's get that set up. So within the reference labels, now if we go to all, we have a divider section. And we can expand this and this divider, we want it to be kind of wider. What do we do up here? 10. And what's cool is we're going to have this divider be transparent and we'll put this at about like 40%. And if we pick up here, we pick the color that was white. So look, you make it white. And if we slide this thing around, you'll see no transparency, total transparency, pick the size that looks that works for you, but now you have 40%. So it kind of fills that out. It's a nice transition. Let's do the same for the accent bar at the top now that we're here. So to set that up, we're gonna go to the cards, all, and we wanna hit up the accent bar. We're gonna set this to white. And we're gonna do the same transparency, 40%. Cool. Look at these cards, they're taking shape. And uh, and so now we have this accent set up. It's starting to, to look at how much transformations happen. Keep going through these subtle steps with me here. It's just gonna equip you fully with how to build these things to make them just look awesome. So let's keep going. So we'll get to this section lastly, but now let's go, let's set up the border. So what you'll see here is each one has a border that's also a color as well. And uh, we're gonna turn that on. So what you'll do is in the same section for the cards, there's going to be a border section and it's on. So just to see it, we'll, we'll make it say, black maybe set the width up more but then we'll have transparency here as well so we can kind of dial this thing in but let's look what we did up here black 350 okay so what just happened here why how do we get it to look a little bit darker well because since we put the same thing kind of with what we did with the divider we set the border color to be black, but then when we put it 50% transparent, it blends with what's already back there, which is the green. So it's slightly darker green, slightly darker red, slightly darker black. Looking good. Uh, now, let's keep progressing, and we're gonna get into this section. So this is where we'll see this background color total fill, and we'll look at the tabular style. Okay, so first let's do tabular style. For this setup, tabular style isn't the best choice, but I'm gonna show you what it is. So it is a cool update. In the reference labels section, when you go now to uh, apply them, 
there's going to be a layout portion. And this is new to the sense of this tune right here. You can pick tabular or sentence. You can also pick columns. So we just move these things to columns and I'll show how maybe this is an overflow support right now as well. So the reason why I'm going to go to overflow support, cause I'm just going to make these things really big. So here's what overflow support is. Maybe you have 15 KPIs and you don't want to show them all at one time. Well, you can go to the layout and I'll artificially create that. Now with say a grid to say one card shown at a time, the spacing, everything looks all messed up, but that's okay right now because with overflow support, uh, if I turn this on, you can have different options. So you can scroll through them like this. Uh, you can also scroll the direction horizontally, but also paginated. So if I wanted to click through, clicking through each KPI, and again, the formatting is not going to be designed for this format, but that's important to know what overflow support is. So now that we have that overflow support, I'm going to come back to this and we're going to reset it by clicking this, going to layout single row. So that's overflow support, but the tabular, as you can see, it took it and kind of stacked up what's going on with the reference labels when I set it to columns. So in this section again, for reference labels, all layout columns, uh, it stacks it. And again, you can move and recenter things as you like. But here's the specific update. If you go to rows, and I like sentence form. I think it tells a good story left to right, but maybe you have a larger KPI card, and this is where the new style of tabular comes into play. So you can click this, and you can see it kind of left it, left centers, right centers, it fills the whole scre screen, and then you can dial in your percentages to have these things fit as you like. If you really wanna get into it, you can find the sweet spot essentially, and, Instead of having a, a sentence from left to right, it kind of will fill the whole thing. I just, I, just, I don't like it as much. I like this sentence form. It just works better for me. So now let's look at figuring out the more detail of these reference labels and how to get into, um, so overflow supported, all the, the formatting, and we're, all this stuff's all about customization too. We're already in that. So, uh, let's look at these values for the cards. We already set up the shape and we have this background now, but let's just go into each of them. So what we'll do reference labels, net sales. We're right here. background. Okay, check this out. So what we're going to do is go to uh, the background for the reference label section. And you'll notice what I just was doing there was kind of spinning my wheels because I was looking again, sometimes you have to and this is the individual card customization. Sometimes you have to pick a specific one. Sometimes it applies to everything. So in this case, it's everything. And what we're going to do is simply just adjust the transparency here. And as you'll see, it's, it's inheriting it from the master color. So that's always, if you're not sure how to set this up, uh, it's a simple dragging of it, of the transparency to kind of keep that whole vibe feeling the same. So up here we have 15%. I'm going to change this to 15%. And again, you can mix in different colors as you want to, but look at that. It is really taking shape. We're getting really close now. So let's look at this. You'll notice you want to have more space sometimes. See how these things are crowding up? So there's an idea with a callout value, how you can move that bar left or right based on a percentage. So let's go into the callout value section, pick all, and there's a layout. And we have the callout size. So I'm going to come up to here. In this case, we set it to 55. If I move it, you can see it slightly moves it, moves it just a little bit. And now look, just like I mentioned, step by step, the formatting and things will start to align and match up. It's just a process of how you go through, go about these kind of things here. So now let's keep on progressing uh, through this process. So let's set up the, 
these reference label values now. We're gonna really dive into the formatting of these things. So for the reference labels, let's first start by setting some of the global settings. So because I go to reference labels, select series all, the value uh, is gonna be the actual values. And you can tell, just click bold real quick, you'll see what it changes. But let's make all these things the same. So we want this to be DIN. We want every title to be DIN as well. If you're not sure what the title is, click bold. You'll see it's all those words right there. So it's DIN, DIN, those are the same, 12, 12, which is good. Okay, and so now there's a lot of customization. So when we're talking about the individual card customization, this is what we're diving into. Within these reference labels, we're gonna have to rename some of these things. So specifically what that looks like, it's a bit of a manual process, but you just gotta do it. And once you just hone this process in, it's gonna equip you to be able to just do it without thinking. But what I mean by that is we have to go through and ret retitle all these things, what we want them to be called. So to do that, we're gonna follow me in this exercise, follow along net sales. What you do is you're gonna pick your label and you're gonna to go to custom and you're gonna rename it. So this is just called goal. You can see it changes right there. Then you're gonna come up to the select label, call this custom variance. Again, it will take a couple minutes, but you just need to do it. Average net sales, custom, what I call it there, average sale. Okay, now let's just keep on moving while we have this flow going, sold. We're gonna call these things custom total units. And then we're gonna call it sold number custom sold number. And now average total custom average total and things will keep keep making shape here so number average total and now we'll go to the return section we're going to pick the field name again final pot final spot we're almost done custom total units units returned custom returned number average return custom all right boom done good now let's look at some of the next steps here we're gonna have to keep progressing through this thing so uh, let's get more into the detail of how we want to do this by formatting these things. So as we go through the detail of these formatting options, you'll just see more of the capabilities of what we have and what we can do. So let's get into the details of this. This is where this slight customization works. Let's square up this net sales card. So what I'm going to do is for the reference labels, go to net sales and let's start by picking certain things. So I'm going to start with the goal. And I'm going to want that to be green because so you can see I'm changing the title goal green bold and I want the value to be bold as well, but I don't want it to be abbreviated. So display units, none. Again, we're going to knock these things out and you'll just see how you get so much control over what you're doing. The next thing I'm going to do is go to another label and we have the variance. So for this variance, and I intentionally am picking to do different things so you can just learn along the way, but we're going to change the value of this to green. It kind of calls attention to what that is. None. That's shaped up. Now the average sale, we're going to set this, this whole thing to the color of the, that green card. Green, green, bold it. Boom. That is matching. Look at that. It is looking good. Now let's go to the next one. Let's go to the sold section. 
So we're gonna come back up to here, reference labels. It's gonna be on the sold card. And we'll start with the total units. And we're making this italic. The value, italic, none. Show the full thing. Don't abbreviate if you have space to show the full thing. Now next, this is where it's gonna be a little bit trickier because we have the detail value there. We're gonna to get to that as well. So we're gonna pick sold. We're gonna mess with the unit sold. We want the value of this to be bold, but we want the display units to be none. So we have that set up. Now let's look at this detailed section. So in the detailed, well, we can tweak some things up here. We want this to be DIN as well, so it's all the same. And we want the font color to be white, but the background color to be this darker color. And what did I pick over here? Black transparency 40. Black transparency 40. Cool. Check out that detail. Now that's all squared away. Now the average total, let's go to this section. So this reference label, we're still here. Average sold, but let's look at that value first. Change the display units to none. Uh, and let's make it bold. But we actually, I think I put in the wrong measure because we need that to be abbreviated. So let's see here. The good troubleshooting on the spot. Let's look at it together. Let's dive into this thing. So the title first, we want that to be bold. But now that is showing a whole bunch. So let's just look at here. Value decimal place is zero. Look at that. Never give up. All right. So you can, can you can customize. Uh, we'll do none. Decimal place is zero. And you also see there's spacing. So we're going to go through and space all these things out as well to take up the right amount of space. We're almost done. Let's get this set up here now. So how we'll do that is by going to this section here and we're going to go to the series of returned. Well, the top part, the first one, we're going to have that be it. Uh, oops. I'm going to pick unit total, italic, value italic, display units, none, returned. Oh, look at this. There's an issue here. So you'll see that this is a negative value because it's kind of coming off. So there's a separate measure called returned absolute. We want that to be in there. 9K. So now we're going to go back to this. Custom. Retitle this. Returned. Just like so, look at that. It's coming along very nicely. Uh, let's add in the detail for this as well. So for this one, we wanna have that returned total. So this is called units total return. I think we had trouble finding that one last time too. Units total return percentage. 27, just like that, nice and big. We'll format it here. So let's go to where we are, units return absolute, return, that looks good. But now let's go to the value, display units none, shows the whole thing, we want it to be bold. And let's figure out this detailed formatting. So for this, the same thing as before, set it to DIN, we want all the fonts to be the same. And the font color of this is white. But then we do the same, uh, We'll pick red and make it 40% transparent. Color that bucket up, looking good. Now let's get this final spot, the average return, saying boom, it's average 58. Again, the point of this is that we're going through in detail and setting up all these things because you will just understand fluidly how to build these things after going through this exercise, this training. So we're gonna pick average return, and now we're gonna set the color and the value. Red, bold. Red, bold. Now look at that. Okay, but you notice there's some spacing problems. 
So let's look at the spacing. We're so close to being finished. Reference label, spacing. So we'll come back here, we'll go to all, and let's look at this together here. So under the, again, you pick all because some settings are gonna to apply to the whole entire card, all of them. And this is one of the cases. So we'll go to the spacing. And let's see what we set up up here. Spacing between labels 10. But you'll see there's other options as well. How do you do that? So you can do customize. Let's set this up to 10. Space these suckers out. Uh, padding before. We don't need padding, we're gonna make more space. See, let's make some more space. There you go. And now padding after nine. So these paddings are, are setting up and tweaking how the padding and spacing works right here. We're going to fix this right here because I can see the image is taking up a little bit more space than it should. And now we have those set up, but you see they're still at the top. So what we can do is go to reference labels and the layout. We want them in the middle. Oh my gosh, look at how much nicer these things are looking now. We've been going through this process together to take from a boring car to something so cool like this using all the new features. It, it's just awesome, man. Uh, but there's a couple more slight subtleties with the glow. And let's just double check these images real quick. So I'm going to go back to the image section. And let's look at the sold. Interesting, they seem to be set up the same. So there's a spacing, oh, the padding. So I think what you can do is with the way you set these things up, the overall visual, that's padding too, five. We'll see, we'll get to it. There's a small setting in there somewhere. Again, there's so much stuff in here, you have to just keep unpacking it. But let's look at the cards now. Uh, so with the shadow and the glow, Going back to the individual card customization, I'm going to pick a series and I'll do net sales. And what we can look at is for the glow, we want that glow to be green. We want that glow to turn on like that. Let's go to, oops, that's that one. We're going to change it over here. Glow to be green. And now let's go to sold. With that to be black. And returned set that to red it's just the subtleness and now you know now we've built these cards they are all set up there is a small 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 formatting thing going on right there but what you can always do is if you want to just change it call out values maybe make the call out size a little bit bigger so you can always just tweak these things just a little bit different ways to go about it uh, just like that so you can move things, everything's a little bit different, but now what we've done is we've gone through the process of showing, oh, the formatting inherited, final little step here. Uh, previously, we had to use the format function for things like percentage and drill those into it or the dollar sign for the detail levels, but now we don't. That is removed, you don't have to mess with it either. And boom, now we have gone through the process of uh, totally building this thing out. So enjoy thanks for watching there'll be way more more and more updates coming but we just went through this whole kpi card process thank you uh leave me any questions comments suggestions uh enjoy power bi see you later bye